Okay, so you have to tell Carrie your news. So I need to sit down? Yes. yes. Have you seen the news? Any news? You didn't watch the news? Okay. You weren't watching WRL last night at 10 o'clock? I don't have cable. Oh, that's good. See? <laughs> <laughs> apparently, apparently there was a there was an announcement last night that, that I'm retiring December 31st. Yeah. And it's true. Change is difficult for some people. I, on the other hand, thrive on change, but it's always difficult to say goodbye. I remember when I left Rocky Mountain, it was hard to say goodbye over there. I'm a type of person that, you know, I'm not going to stop working. I, I always want to be able to do something, and so new opportunities are a way to kind of reinvigorate myself in doing things for larger groups of individuals, so that's really what my emphasis is going to be. Uh, are they recovering now, or are they still struggling? They still good. The community in Asheville has been extremely supportive. I've been here a good long while now. A lot of people know of me or have, have seen me in and around town. Most of it, I think, the notoriety comes from the HOPE initiative. But the small town police departments, I think, do a really good job of connecting with the community. Hello! How are you? I think the future of the HOPE initiative is, is bright. I really do, and I, I feel that those individuals that want to get into recovery will still be able to find that in the HOPE initiative, no matter who's kind of driving the bus. Governor Cooper's from Nash County. Come on, Chief. Good morning. It's great to see you. My agenda with him was to try to let him have an understanding that a lot of the programs that like the HOPE initiative that are popping up around the state of North Carolina are grassroots and access to funding can be a stumbling block. You know, just like most of the rest of the country, the opioid epidemic has been a scourge on our people, death after death after death. He was chief of a police force. You see this problem on the front line. And we've had a lot of issues with substance dis use disorder in the past, but the way opioids grip someone and how long of a process it is to be successfully treated, this was unlike anything that they had ever seen before. And probably the most important thing is prevention and treatment. Good, how are you? I'm good. It's always nice to be able to go back and check on individuals that are in programs. I went to visit Sherry. She talked about how she had had almost five months of, of good time there, and then she used again. So then what happened? So I had um, an appointment downtown, and I rode on the bus with um, another girlfriend. While we were on the bus, there was a guy that pulled out a, a huge knot of heroin. And once he found out that we were from this rehab, so people like that prey on the weak, exactly. for sure. I got off two stops down the road to a McDonald's, and he got off right behind me and my girlfriend. Mm -hmm. She went into the bathroom, I ordered our coffee, and I had like $10, $11 left over and change. And I was like, look, I'll give you $10. Statistically, individuals that have a substance use disorder will return to use four or five times before they get into a long-term sustained recovery. People think, oh, we got you help and you went and used again. Why'd you do that? So the more you understand about the disease, you, you kind of understand a little bit better about, yes, that is a possibility, but that doesn't make the person not want to get into recovery. I don't know if it was the combination of me being clean for so long or if just being straight fentanyl, but wow. I didn't have any recollection of me going out. Wow. As they were getting ready to carry me back uh, into the ambulance, I started to come to from the oxygen. The individuals that we have lost that have come through the HOPE initiative through this disease, it has kept me up at night sometimes. To go to a funeral and be there with so many young people that are still struggling with the disease, 
who are there to support their friend who has passed from an overdose, it's hard to watch sometimes because you just want to reach out and touch all of them and you know you won't be able to. The program wasn't about me, it was about helping other individuals and so it's just a matter of having a good solid understanding and mission about what it is you want to do and, and anybody can do it.